video is brought to you by Squarespace. From your very own online gallery to your website, shop, <laughs> maybe one day I'll say this line, make it with Squarespace. In today's video, I am going to be revisiting this very familiar to probably a lot of you watercolor set. I see this set of watercolors in the store all the time. And even though I've used very similar panned watercolors for children, I was just really curious how I guess Crayola handled these pan watercolors. So let's do it. Let's make art using this $4 set of watercolors. As usual, I do want to do a quick swatch of these watercolors because I, you know, I like to see all of the colors and there are a lot of colors, 24 colors. There's some really interesting ones in here. Oh, interesting. It looks like you are able to even take these out. So I'm going to do that because this this thing won't stick. Okay, so I have swatched all 24 colors and first impressions, look how bright and vivid and just saturated these colors are. They look like, they look like crayons in watercolor form. Now, we've swatched all the colors, but I do want to do some like layering test and blending test. And I thought it'd be really fun to compare those to our $300 set of watercolors. So let's do a quick comparison just because I'm curious. Okay, so let's just start off with a few simple tests like a gradient. Let's see how well a gradient works with our $4 Crayola watercolor versus our super expensive Schmieke. Let's see, red's a very classic color. Let's just stick with our red for now. All right, nothing like crazy happening. I mean, I didn't really expect anything crazy to happen. So now obviously I will say that red is so much more pigmented than our Crayola watercolors. Yeah, I mean, honestly, as far as blending goes, I kind of didn't really feel a difference. Obviously there's a difference in the pigmentation of the watercolors, but the blending felt very similar. I will say one of the biggest differences I already noticed between these two watercolors is how much easier it is to get a flat of color compared to here where you can kind of see where each stroke is going. Okay, our yellow has dried. Let's see what happens if I do... <laughs> this brush isn't the most... It doesn't really want to do a twirl. There we go. Okay. Obviously you can definitely tell where the blue overlaps yellow compared to that one. Let's do a quick little rainbow. Beautiful. Let's do it with our other watercolors. I don't know what it is about the more professional watercolors that is just so much earthier. Maybe it's because adult artists do a lot more landscaping and realism art. So having just like these very neon colors isn't the most practical. So yeah, I think this was a really fun test. I actually find these watercolors to not be dusty or chalky or just... They seem fairly easy to work with. I will say like the more thicker areas do dry with this maybe like more waxy sort of texture, but it's a lot nicer than some of the cheaper pans that I've used that have this really gross chalky texture that's really hard to get a flat wash with. Okay, before I say I do like them, let's create a whole illustration. So let's get into it. So I actually thought it would be really fun to, I'll be honest, I have no idea what this drawing is going to be. I am going to do a white border, but I thought it would be really fun to have this chunk of cloud that was sort of like altering the shape of the border. So we have a cloud down there. From there, I'm actually not sure what I wanted to do, I'll be honest. It is spooky month, it is October, so I was kind of thinking of doing something with like a giant skeleton or ghosts. So because we have such bright and colorful watercolors, I'm wondering if we did... Gosh, I want to do something with a rainbow because I always think about rainbows when I do these really colorful Crayola illustrations. I can't resist. You know what? I like the idea of there being like a cliff or something and maybe we've got... What if we had like just like a little person over here with like a witch? <gasps> wait, wait, wait. What if we had like... Let's do like a witch hat. It could be like a kitty witch or something. It doesn't have to be a human. Okay, I've decided the cat is too big. Let's just let's just shrink it a little bit. So let's just make the kitty really small as if the kitty is waiting on someone to come back. Like a really small kitty, like a really, really tiny kitty. 
Now I'm like, but what if there was also a ghost kitty waiting? Oh boy. Well, now I'm wondering if it should just be ghost kitty waiting on their owner to come back. Let's see. Like ghost kitty died on the mountain and now they're waiting for their owner to die so they can join them on the mountain. <laughs> That's so sad. October is supposed to be scary, not sad. Maybe like their ghost owner to come back. Ghost witch? Is it ghost witch? I don't want her to wear too many clothes because then you won't be able to tell that she is a ghost. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's exaggerate her a lot. She's she's a ghost, but I still want her to be sort of in a human figure here. I apparently like to draw ghost witches. That seems to be my thing this October. We gotta give her a go a juicy. <laughs> we gotta give her a juicy ghost booty for sure. And then her broom can basically be coming out between her butt cheeks, let's be real. You can kind of see her broom between her. <laughs> oh my god, okay. I'll be honest, that looks a little dirty, but you know what? We're just gonna roll with it. We're gonna, we're just gonna roll with it. <laughs> I think it's really cute. I really like the concept. She's coming back home to her ghost kitty in a cave. All right, let's lighten our sketch and then I'm just gonna jump into here. Maybe we can do like a yellow to orange to red sky, really bring those fall colors in. The ghosts can be just transparent. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see how I play around with those, but otherwise I'm super excited. You know what else I'm super excited for? That's right, the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. I mean, come on, look at my website. I didn't even have to design it myself because I used their super nifty, customizable templates created by designers. That's right, I don't even know how to make my own website, but with Squarespace, I can. Now I've got my own portfolio and gallery to look at it. You can look at my art. But most importantly, I can sell my art online. Look at all my merch. I can connect all of my social media accounts, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, they're all there. And best of all, you too can make your own website by heading to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash caseygolden to save 10% off your first purchase of website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Go make yourself a website. And with that, I'm too excited to paint my illustration. So let's get back to it. Okay, I made a few minor adjustments, water down our watercolors, and I do have a few more brushes from Crayola. Um, all in questionable quality with that blunt end, but we're gonna suffer through it. So I've decided that I'm going to do a sort of, what's it called? A sunset. And I've made some markings on the paper to help guide me where I want the gradient to be. Cause I, I just know that this is gonna be very difficult with the brushes and the paint quality. So we're gonna see how this goes. Wish me luck. I have to say I'm really impressed with how smooth of a wash I'm getting with these colors. They do have this weird sort of slimy feel to them, I guess. Just switch to a smaller brush so that I am not struggling to paint around our little kitty here. Don't know why I didn't switch to a smaller brush earlier. I think I just forgot. <laughs> Once I started going, I forgot I had a smaller brush. Okay, time to introduce our orange gradient. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't seem to be flowing together like the test did. I don't, I don't know what it is. I suspect it's just not as wet. I think I made the test very, very wet. So I think maybe the gradient was just a lot easier. And of course, I don't really want to just blob a bunch of water on the paper. So things aren't, things aren't quite as wet. So maybe it's just not as easy as a gradient this time around. I swear these are like the slowest drying watercolors I've ever used in my life. Which like I also said, I'm not mad about it. Makes it easier to work with them. And I wanted to add just a little bit of the purple to help the gradient sort of reach this side. And oh my gosh, that purple is toxic. It just sort of took over. Is that it? I think that's it for our sunset. Oh my gosh, look at that color. That is absolutely insane it's definitely a lot blotchier than i'm used to working with watercolors but i think overall definitely an interesting texture we can you know chalk it up to magic who knows i'm gonna let this dry because oh my goodness this is a very wet piece of paper and then we can continue on with 
I don't know. Adding details. Okay, that took a while to dry, but I have one regret and that is the yellow at the bottom. It just doesn't seem to, it's just really bright. So I'm thinking about putting orange over it. It is just this side and it seems easy enough to do. Oh gosh, I'm scared though. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you know, I wondered, as I watched it dry, I thought the watercolor, and I did say it had a sort of like, what did I call it, slimy texture. And as I watched it dry, I thought it kind of looked like plasticky, like it was sort of getting a skin on top of it, like a pudding would. It really doesn't seem like these layer that well, like it almost seems like, look at the way it beads. It's definitely like water resistant. Oh boy, so this is going to be interesting. How am I going to make that yellow a little more orangey if it... Oh my gosh, oh no, if it's water resistant, no! <laughs> it does look better though. It, it didn't do much, but it I think it looks a little better. It was just a little too bright, and especially because we have our white ghost here, I wanted to make sure that she was popping. Gosh, I don't normally work lineless with watercolor, so this is definitely a bit of a challenge for me. Wow, I am just splashing this blue all over this place. I think it's the brush. The brush is just like, it's a little silly. So I think it just has a tendency to splatter because I've been splattering this whole time. <laughs> it's been kind of, uh, kind of messy. I'm going to add a little bit of water here so that it helps the blue and the green gradient a little better than our sky did. Hopefully that'll help. I just wish my gradients lasted a little bit longer because they're so sudden. They don't seem to stretch as far as I would like them to. It's just very much like, here's a little bit of the in-between color and now we're at the other color. I'm like, no, I want it to gradient a little bit longer though. It is a really difficult to create a gradient with watercolors that are very hard to work with. I'm thinking, do I add a yellow at the top of the mountain? And I think about how I didn't really vibe with the yellow at the bottom of the sky, but it might be, might be different with the mountain. All right, honestly, whoa, that mountain? <laughs> this illustration is kind of all over the place, but Gosh, those colors, those colors sure make me happy. Okay, I'm totally vibing with this color I just mixed, so I'm going to paint her bow a nice teal color. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid the mountain because it's still wet. Okay, oh my gosh, holding my breath. So her bow, I think it actually looks really nice with the green sort of coming over here. I could make her broom green as well, as if it's like grass. That actually might be really, really cute. I think I'm just gonna, you know what? Wait, 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 let's use the, the green of the top of the mountain. And maybe we can like sprinkle in some flowers in it and we can also have flowers on the mountain. I feel like I'm painting with crayons because of the color. And also the dried watercolor has such a weird like plasticky sheen to it. It's almost like wax. I don't hate them, but I, I don't love them. Let's see, I'll go ahead and start adding a transparency to the ghost where the sky would go through. I'm not gonna do it too much because I don't want it to take away from the ghost's whiteness. Really want her to pop off of the background, but I do wanna add a little bit. Perfect opportunity to give her a little red cheek. I forgot I wanted to try to add white watercolor around the moon to help it shine. Let's just see. Oh geez, okay. You know what, let's just see what happens. Oh, wait, oh, wait, I I don't hate it. <laughs> Dare I say, I, I kind of like it. I'm going to do my best to add a little bit of shading to some of the aspects of this illustration, but I gotta be honest, they really don't layer well because we found out the watercolor is waterproof. How does that happen? I don't know, but it is a little waterproof, so I don't really know how layering Shading's gonna go, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it my all, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. The water resistance of this watercolor is actually making me a little nervous about being able to layer inking on top of these layers. I guess, um, guess we'll see how that goes. 
I feel like the mountain is just a little bit too plain. I know I'm going to add trees soon, but I feel like we need just a little bit of texture. So I'm just going to add some texture to our mountain and see, see if that does anything. I'm afraid it's actually gonna completely donk it, but you know what? Let's just try it. Let's just see what happens. All right, so it's time to put down the leaves on our trees. And I can only see some of the trees I put down. I can't see all of them, but it should be okay, right? Right, right, y'all? This this won't be a disaster, will it? Right, I keep forgetting that this watercolor is basically waterproof. <laughs> oh gosh, how am I going to put the trees down? I guess we'll see. Oh boy, red on green sure makes a poop color. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh geez. The water resistance is not making this process easy, I'll tell you that much. I think the last detail I wanted to add is... Oh! <laughs> I was gonna say some little red flowers. That's not... It's not really little. Oh my god, why is it spreading so much? <gasps> what? No! No! Why are you doing this? <laughs> I need a toothpick. Why is it... Why is it spreading so much? Oh no. Oh gosh, okay. I just wanted a little bit of like flowers, but it spreads so much. I'm kind of scared. Okay, I think that's enough flowers before I completely ruin it. I do want to add a few into her broom so that it sort of mimics, oh gosh, the mountain if I can get, oh now we're getting small flowers, huh? Okay, I see how it is. Now that I actually want slightly larger flowers, we're, we're getting a bunch of small ones. Okay, I see how it is, Crayola paint. Oh boy, uh, this actually just sort of looks like blood splatters. I guarantee you it's flowers, oh no! <laughs> Usually when I line my work, I use a Micron pen, but I kind of feel like using a colored pencil just because I feel like the softness of the watercolor and just the vibe of this piece, I think a colored pencil is going to work a lot better than using a pen. Okay, it's really hard to use colored pencil on... Uh-oh. <laughs> this, this plasticky watercolor, oh no! This actually might be a, a bad idea, but I, I think I can push through. I don't, I don't know, oh no. I'm having some regrets. Let's move on to over here all of a sudden. Yeah, the colored pencil is definitely struggling to Oh gosh, make a stroke on this very, very plasticky watercolor. So the line work is certainly going to be soft. I don't even know. It's almost like the color pencil has to scrape away through the watercolor to get to the paper to create line work. It's, it's a very strange way to work, that's for sure. Now originally I did say I wanted the ghost to not have line work because I thought it would make her have a softer more ghost-like feel, but to be honest, I kind of feel like she needs it. So I was thinking with the hat, as you can see her hat is not colored in. Originally I was going to just fill it in with black ink, but now that I'm using a pencil, I guess I'm going to fill it in with, with pencil, which should be a very long and painful process. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, I'm just more worried about the pencil running out of lead more than anything. I really need to replace this little guy. Okay, the fear of my pencil running out is is becoming quite real. <laughs> it's actually getting hard to hold, it's so small. Oh no, if I run out, mid-illustration. Oh gosh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't have another one. <laughs> this is the only one I got. Oh no, you can do it, little guy, you can do it. You can do, oh no. <laughs> This is so hard to hold. Oh no. Oh no. So I'm, I'm sharpening the pencil and the lead is breaking out of it. I've only got so much lead left. Please don't do this to me now, pencil. <laughs> the hand cramps are real. I wish I had a pencil extender, but I don't. <laughs> I don't know if I can do the trunks of the trees with the pencil because the pencil really just scrapes the watercolor away. <laughs> oh no, you can see how it's like lighter underneath. I have to scrape away the watercolor and then get to the the paper. It's kind of crazy. 
I think the solution to this is just going to be, sadly, less detail on the branches sort of going all over the place, which is kind of sad, but honestly, <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, <laughs> between my hand absolutely dying holding this super teeny tiny pencil and the fact that you just, I can barely, barely get any of this to actually go down, I think this illustration is done and honestly i had a lot of fun working on this piece and look how freaking bright and colorful it is actually hold on we need to peel away the tape on the edge okay there it is we have finished this $4 Crayola watercolor art. I think my favorite part is the bow. Something about it is just so crisp. The colors are very nice. I love it. Overall, the colors are just so bright with this piece. And even though the watercolors were very hard to work with, mostly because they sort of turn into this like plasticky, dried stuff. Otherwise, you know, aside from that, it was really fun and I actually really enjoyed working on this piece. Look how freaking colorful it is! Thank you so much again to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com for your free trial. Get yourself a website. And thank you guys all so, so much for watching my video. See you next time. Bye.